All right, track guy. So no mount. And hopefully there's a little more effort into this one this week, but I am missing a few things. You know, build week and all been kind of preoccupied. So let's just get to it. Keys of the race card. And I'm going to sound like a broken record because all I talk about is tires. And that's basically the theme for this. But in the opposite way, not really take care of them. Just drive the shit out of it and you're good. We don't really get where and you end up going faster later. So yeah, cold tires though, on the other hand, are absolutely miserable. And it feels so slow and slidey, so give it a lap or two and it'll come to. And we're still talking about tires. No tires on your pit. You gotta make at least one stop. You can see it there on the other notes. No yellows, obviously. You can use some curbs if you want. No big deal, but that was the theme, talking about tires. So anyways, let's get to pit road and uh, talk about it. All right, making our way to pit road. We're gonna take turn 10 like normal. In fact, the whole brake zone is basically the same as normal. The minute it dips into this dip, hard on the brakes down to second gear. At 45 miles per hour at the yellow cone, which is kind of hard to see. So it makes it really easy to underdrive or overdrive, depending on how crazy you are. There's your pit speed exit cone and the blue cone's just right up the road. So yeah. All right, fix setup, fix weather. I actually just used the regular, whatever, iRacing generated for NIS, which gave me a 110 track temp, or 111, I think is what it says, but I just kind of estimated. Anyways, there's the only things that I've changed on the setup that you can, which, well, you see it on screen. So, uh, yeah, we'll show all this lap was done, then we'll talk about it. There you have it for a 115.6, I believe. So let's back that up. All right, gotta make our way into one. I forgot the chase cam, by the way, but you just wanna get as close to the inside wall as possible. You can see I'm on the limiter. Once we're alongside it, I start to lift. I mean, I was really on the limiter there. So I'm gonna be playing with the brakes here. Gonna do a downshift. Now there's a lot of dancing, if you will, with the throttle and brake trying to modulate some speed but once you're alongside this curve that's when I begin to turn back to the right and apply probably the most brake you'll see into that corner you can go to second here if you want I just left it up there because it's easier I thought you can still get wheel spin but it's not as bad so the problem starts here you want to get as far right as you can but on newer tires, the car is super weird here that if you turn in too hard, the rear end will just either bottom out and step out and you die for it. But as we're going through this dip, that's when I'm on the brakes. Get as close to that curve without smacking it. And here's some more footwork to get the car set up for this right-hander. You want to get as close to that curve without actually touching it because it causes a bad bounce if you do otherwise. So yeah, here is extremely hard to see the exit. So that's why it's kind of, it's kind of difficult because of that, but you want to use all the track. 
little bit of wheel spin. Now there's a little dirt thing here on the left. That's what I'm using as a brake zone. I think it stays there no matter what. So I'm just I'm just doing that. I'm in third gear. Now you kind of want to miss this curb a little bit, but I ended up touching it barely, which is fine and all. Then throttle up hard, and I will say this is one of those curves that's really tricky because if you hit it wrong, you die for it. If not, you can use all the speed and into another heavy brake zone, which I'm breaking like two car lengths before the edge of the wall. And that's when I downshift a second and use all the extra track out here. It's not a 1x until, you know, the dirt or grass, whatever you want to call it. Here I'm letting it roll because the car wanted to turn better doing that versus trail braking. Once I get to the center, I throttle up pretty hard when it's pointed straight. You will get wheel spin though. And I do lift a little bit. To shift might as well do it all at once and i'm going to shift again the fourth as before we get to this curb and you want to hit it just like that any weirder and it gets wonky some more footwork again trying to keep as much speed through here and i did hit the curbs in a way that wasn't desirable but it worked now you're going to be really hard on the gas here you got to trust it you got to believe that it'll stick and into turn 10 i'm going to break at the start of this curb i thought yeah, that's where it was. I, I This was post-commentary, so yeah. Once I get out the brakes here at the start of this curve, I'm going to let it roll. Then I start picking up the throttle. And again, you got to trust that it'll stick. Really pick up the throttle. Full throttle at some point. And that's when the car gets weird. And like pit road, we're going to get into this little dip. And once I'm in there, hard on the brakes. All the way down to second gear. And I mean really hard on the brakes. In fact, I missed the corner because I might have. Well, I screwed up. Let's just say that. Get as close to the those tire barriers there as you can. But I screwed it up. And that's probably like three tenths right there. And honestly, my favorite part is going through the gears here out of the last corner. Now you can go to fifth, but I just leave it at fourth and smack the limiter. And yeah, there we go. That's what's gonna get you your lap. All right, that's it for this track guide. I should've gone way more in depth, but I was just, again, build week, so it gets pretty difficult to do. I think the next one's New Hampshire, so I guess we'll see you then. Anyways, it's the rest of Chewy's side.